uh, a very short look on our product assortment. Most of you know it most likely pretty well, but just to summarize it a little bit, we have a wide range of binoculars. So depending on whatever the customer or the end user is, is searching for, we have the right product for him. Starting from the smallest binoculars like the compact binoculars, the CL Pocket and the CL Companion, for people who are looking for a small compact product that they could take with them all the time. Like for hiking, travel and leisure, but also hunting in Africa, a small pocket binocular is, is the perfect choice. If somebody is looking more for the universal binoculars, they're going more into the 42 millimeter direction, where we're starting with the Habicht, which is our traditional binocular. First of all, it's called like that, but it's really the traditional binocular. So we produce it now since more than 40 years, and it's still selling good because it's a product with a good price performance relation. The people like the traditional design, like the slightly three dimensional plastic picture. And then we come to the next level of a SLC 42, which is, let's say, state of the art production with fluoride containing lenses, brilliant optics for a relatively reasonable price. And the SLC 56 binocular, so the binocular mainly chosen by people who are looking for hunting in the night, hunting in twilight, catching as much light as possible to have a, the brightest possible picture. But brightness is not only transmission, as you probably know. So having all that marketing slogans well, in the hunting magazines, in the internet, everywhere, so a 56 binocular is definitely helpful for hunting in the night because you have a big objective diameter which results in a big exit pupil. And of course, every high-end product has to have a good transmission which means more than 90%. Everything else is just marketing. If you have 92 or 93, no one cares because the human eye is anyhow not able to see differences of 3, 4, 5% at all. And our EL series, the EL Swara Vision, with optically the best what we can produce. So there with the Swara Lens, Swara Vision system and the special optical system, it's optically really the best that you can find on the market. Thanks to the lens system, thanks to the resolution on the side of the field of view, and thanks to the picture which has no distortion at all. For some people, it's sometimes a little bit, how to say, unusual. So they look through the Elsewar vision, and especially when they move the Elsewar vision, they say something looks looks strange, different, because the distortion that you have in the normal binocular is comfortable for the human eye when you move the binocular. If you have a picture which is so perfect, like in the Elsewar vision, and you you go to let's say the scan mode when you move the binocular, some people have the feeling that that the picture is a little bit rolling. This is because the picture is so perfect that the human eye is not used to. Nevertheless, if somebody is complaining about that, you get used to that very quickly. So it's just a few time of using it to get your brain and your eyes used to that effect. I've so whatever. Mentioned this. I've never mentioned this, you know. I don't see it at all. Some people see it, some people not. The yes. human eye is a very sensitive yes, yes. Uh, thing. Some people do it and say, okay, something looks strange. I have never seen it, frankly speaking. Me too. Yeah. So it, it really depends from person to person if, if they recognize that or not. But that's interesting you mentioned this, you know. Yeah, because yeah. the picture is, is different and, and so perfect compared to everything else what you're used to in the binocular segment is that some people need a certain time to get used to that. So for every choice, there is the perfect binocular. And especially in Eastern Europe, the rifle scopes are by far the most important product. But if we look on a worldwide level, we're selling more binoculars and telescopes than rifle scopes. So more than 50% of our turnover is done by binoculars and rifle uh, telescopes. And a little bit less than 50% is done with the rifle scope segments. <coughs> and there is, of course, lots of differences in the culture of hunting. So an Austrian hunter has a rifle scope, a binocular, and a telescope. No question. 
Every Austrian hunter is using a telescope and a binocular and a rifle scope. We like to carry a little bit heavier. If you go, I don't know, for example, to Russia, and you ask a hunter if you're using a telescope, <laughs> yeah. Strange question. Strange question, yeah. <laughs> Even the question is strange. Not if he's using it, the question. So depending from the style of hunting, from the culture of hunting, a little bit also from the regulation of hunting, the people are demanding different products. An important product is, of course, our optronic, inst our optronic instrument, so the EL range, the binocular with the rangefinder. I think every one of you have known it. In two words, it's the only binocular with the perfect optic and the rangefinder integrated. So we don't lose transmission, we don't lose optical quality, we don't lose resolution, and we were able to integrate a rangefinder. And all that in a compact, nice product, which is still easy to hold, light to carry around without you know, having such a brick in front of you. <coughs> the, the telescopes, as said, the modular system, the ATS STX system, and one step lower, the ATS STS system, nice fixed body telescopes with two different op op oculars to choose for the different magnifications. The rifle scopes, we have the American rifle scopes, the set three and the set five, with a one inch tube, not illuminated. So especially in the American market, they are hunting in the day and they are used to one inch tubes. So they go mo mainly for the set five and the set three. Those are also the only products which are assembled in America because we sell it to the American market, we repair them there. <coughs> for the European market, it's not such an important product because every European hunter is asking for a rifle scope with an illuminated dot. Then the Set 4 rifle scope, a very successful rifle scope line, which we updated, upgraded several generations. Now, finally, it comes sadly to an end of a generation, so we have to say goodbye of the Set 4, just because of the reason but that we focus on innovation and focus on the new product designs. So the production of the Set 6, is going on because the set six is still one of the best rifle scopes on the market. Real six times zoom in a 30 millimeter tube. I think every one of you knows it. Then the X5 rifle scope, a relatively still new product on the market. Our first rifle scope for the real sport and long range shooters. So for shooters who want to shoot with strong calibers, maybe light carbon rifles muzzle brakes on long distances. So an extremely robust, reliable, and extremely precise scope. <coughs> so there we have new competitors in the sports shooting segment, and if the people compared it with us, they all said, from an optical quality, the, the product is the best scope on the long range shooting market. So for the human eye, it's very comfortable. You have good contrast, you know, comfortable observation, really good target recognition. And last but not least, our main topic, the Z8, but Daniel will tell more about it later, so just to have it in the full assortment picture. Digiscoping, a very interesting opportunity to add value to a binocular and a telescope. So you have the possibility to combine a telescope and even a binocular with a camera or an iPhone. So this allows to make, to use the magnification of the optical product to make picture on longer distances. If you use it with the telescopes, you, ex you achieve extremely huge focal lengths. So you can use a telescope like a huge teleobjective, which would normally cost you eight to 10,000 euros and be a big heavy brick you can do with one telescope and combining it with an SLR camera. Alternatively, you always have your iPhone with you and your binocular with you. So you can combine those two things with the iPhone adapter and use the magnification of the binocular to make pictures on longer distances. And that works really well because the iPhone camera has improved so much that you can really make nice pictures with it. <coughs>